That was clever. That was. That was good. The white folk be black folk though. Oh wait, never mind. Never mind. The man who killed Elijah McClain just walked free. The man who killed Elijah McClain just walked free. <laughs> the, he served 119 days. He had a five-year sentence. Oh, and he's the one that injected him directly, right? And he was convicted of another charge, which was the most serious one, which was there was no legitimate medical reason to give him ketamine in the first place. Okay. He died for wearing a ski mask and being black. That's what he died for. And he was convicted. <laughs> I don't have a damn thing to give you. I, I, look. <laughs> I don't have any points to make. There's nothing I can add to the conversation. What possible unusual circumstance could it be? Tell me that. <laughs> Look, okay, I'm... I'm so sorry to his mother. I say violence is necessary. Violence is a part of America's culture. It is as American as cherry pie. American taught the black people to be violent. People recognize, and the poor people recognize first, what it takes to get the man off your back, what it takes to get freedom in America. America used violence to secure her freedom, and they used us every time in a war to participate in violence to ensure her freedom. Individuals do not create rebellions, conditions do. Until they begin to address themselves to those conditions, rebellions will continue and they will escalate. We learn well from America. Violence is a part of American culture and black folks are a part of America. So therefore, if we accept any of your culture at this point, it will be your violent nature. Each time a black church is bombed or burnt, that is violence in our streets. Each time a black body is found in the swamps of Mississippi and Alabama, that is violence in our land. Each time black right workers cannot be protected by the government, that is anarchy. Each time a police officer shoots and kills a black teenager, that is urban crime. You see, we recognize America for what it is, the Fourth Reich. And we tell America to be on notice because if you are going to play Nazis, black folks ain't going to play Jews. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> At this point, I want to address myself <laughs> to the so-called Negro leaders who find it their will and their right to condone the sending of federal troops rather than federal aid to the impoverished and war-stricken people of rebellions. We say to these leaders, there is something morally wrong with your analysis of America's political situation. How can you tell black people to be nonviolently and at the same time condone the sending of white killers into the black communities? It's something wrong. The question has been raised about why black men fight and have fought for this country. It is the black man's implacable will to be free that makes him fight for this country. And it is that same will that will make him fight this country. The word Negro is a word coined, coined rather, or coined, for, <laughs> for black people to lose their identity. They were given the term Negro, which means nothing, has no significance as far as black, black people are concerned. Negro is not a race. Black constitutes a race. Negro does not constitute a race. Black people have to begin to identify with the word black and with other black people, not Negroes. You don't decide what I am. You see, Animals and slaves are named after and by their masters. Men name hey, themselves. Hey, 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 baby, all right. Yeah. Hey. Hey, black men. We cool with what just happened with, with Buddy. We cool with just getting slain like that. We cool with a white man just saying, hey, put that boy on the chopping block. Quick. Even though he's innocent, we... We don't want to get, we, we cool with, this is what we doing in 2024 is black men. We on TikTok, we on vacation trying to look like when our people just, this is what we doing. Ain't no more Fred Hamptons. 
I'm finna say some shit, and I mean this with my whole heart, every fiber of my being. I'm saying it with my whole chest. Fuck the U.S., fuck the government, fuck the police, fuck anybody else that's still behind them. Fuck all of y'all. This world is already fucked up enough but for the U.S. to be so corrupt and not give a fuck about us. And we continue to sit up here and protest and, and do it the nice way. We continue to riot. Let's put hands and feet on these people. Let's actually go to war with these people. Like, do y'all... I'm tired, bro, and I just, I don't feel like y'all are tired enough because it's like the same fucking cycle. We, we keep letting these people do us the same fucking way. For centuries, we've been letting them do us the same fucking way. Sometimes they'll unalive an innocent black man just to show you that they still have the power to do so. That's a quote that I just saw from my brother that really sums up how I feel so well. The pressure of the full weight of the system crushes those at the bottom the hardest whether it be black people, poor people, which in our case often happens to be uh, a very common uh, combo. Like over a million people spoke up on this man's behalf and the governor still like, hmm, you know what? The prosecutors are saying we need to look at this again. The defense is saying we need to look at this again. The, em the evidence was contaminated. It looks like there's evidence of they dismiss a juror because of their race, but I think we need to still kill this black man. Even if we take race out of the picture, oh, I still think we need to unalive this man who might be innocent. We got a runaway government. It's just a runaway government. That's what it is. I hope nobody who was planning not to vote in this year's election is upset about Marcellus Williams' death. While, of course, it's a tragedy, and yes, you can be sad, the importance of people being placed in these positions who make decisions, this went through prosecutors, defenders, judges, local Supreme Courts, state Supreme Court, you know what I mean? It just went all the way up the chain. And there were elected officials who decided that his life should not have been spared, despite evidence, despite the prosecution turning around and saying, you know what, he might be innocent, despite the actual DNA of the weapon not being his. There were so many people people involved that had been voted into these positions and then when it got to the supreme court the president packed the supreme court with conservative judges again i'm not political but if you were thinking about not voting and marcellus's williams life made you upset you're contradicting yourself contradicting yourself you have to vote in local elections you have to vote in state elections you have to vote in the presidential election because it's all intertwined and it all matters so if you were thinking about not voting let this be just a sign as we head into november that you must vote and that's why i don't understand how people like don't want to vote in things like this happen we can't have a voice if we're not in the positions if people don't run but also if people do not vote this is Mike Parson, the current governor of Missouri. He was elected in 2018, and since his election, 12 people have been put to death in the state of Missouri. The 12th person being Brother Khalifa Williams, who was executed at 6 p.m. Central today. I've seen people talk about the fact that, you know, Mike Parson needs to be voted out. What can we do to vote him out? He can't be governor anymore. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that Mike Parson will no longer be governor of Missouri after November. Because he has served his term. He's done. And what's so depressing to me is the fact that Mike Parson, who just turned 69 last week, is going to retire. He's going to retire in wealth. He's going to retire in luxury. I'm not sure what type of pension former governors get, but I'm sure it's a lot of money. Evil people live the longest, so he's going to spend the next 20 or so years of his life on golf courses, at country clubs, on yachts as the high ranking official on nonprofit boards, and he will never pay for what he did today. It is not lost on me that an innocent black man was executed yesterday. And a good portion of my comments are black people nitpicking on the roles of state and federal government which I had never mentioned that the president nor the vice president can actually grant clemency. However, what I did say is that they could use their position of power to voice their dismay, their disgust, their disagreement in this decision. And while many of these people told me that I need to Google and I need to know how the government works and I need to go back to civics club, I recognize that a lot of you didn't make it to AP government where we learned of a concept called the bully pulpit. 
history. Now, we've been going through Unit 2 of the AP Government Curriculum, and in this video, we're going to talk about presidential communication. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked bully pulpit style, well, then let's get to it. So our objective in this video is as follows. Explain how communication technology has changed the president's relationship with the national constituency and the other branches. Now, there's one advantage that the president has that no other single politician has, namely the unique attention of the nation. If you stop 10 people on the street, it's likely that many of them would not be able to name their congressional representatives or even know their face if they pass them on the street. But everybody knows who the president is, and if they're keeping track of politics, they have their eye on the president. And that is a huge advantage for the executive branch. Remember that among the informal powers of the president is persuasion. The president has a whole chunk of policies to be enacted, but can't pass any of those laws on the president's own authority, so therefore must rely on Congress to enact that legislation in line with the presidential policy agenda. So how does the president get that done? Through persuasion. And the main way that happens is through the president's communication with the nation and the other branches of government. In layman's terms, a bully pulpit is when you use public speeches or the media to address and influence public opinion on an issue and also puts pressures on the state because the state need federal funds. But you know who else didn't say anything? Trump. Seems like they're much more alike than they're not, huh? You see, I wasn't even going to make a video like this. I was going to leave politics completely out of my page. But you know what? Welcome to the cookout. So one thing that we're going to start off by saying is this woman is not like us. And I'm not even trying to talk about that Kendrick Lamar song, I promise. But literally, seriously, figuratively, biologically, genetically, she is not us. She is not like us. This woman is not a quote-unquote black woman, right? They use the word black to try to bunch us all into one group. Oh, y'all all are black. So then when we see somebody with some type of brown or some type of melanin in their skin, we automatically assume that they are for us. This is not true. You see, our women and uh, ladies, please excuse me for this. I am not attacking you nor coming at you. I love you with everything or almost everything that is in my heart and my soul. But listen, we got so used to not wearing our real hair and buying Indian bundles and putting them in our hair. Now 90% of our elders look like this, except they're wearing wigs. This woman is not wearing a wig, okay? This is the woman who sells y'all all of the fake hair. This is not the woman that cares about your hair. This is not the woman that cares about us nor our community. I'm tired of the cackling. I'm tired of the laughing. I'm tired of the giggling. I'm tired of the fake accents. Hear me and hear me clear. We win. All right, the people that y'all call black, the real indigenous Americans, right? The real Hebrew Israelites, uh, how, how, however you want to say it, the real Murs. You feel me? The real kings and queens, the people on the walls. We won already. Your time is up. The games is up. And what you're trying to do with this woman will not work. I am Chief Yasun. Get used to my face and get used to my voice. Welcome to the cookout. All right, folks, at first, I thought it was nothing to it. You know, people were tagging me, you know, informing me of this information. And, you know, I was just like, you know, that's kind of frivolous. And then like, comment, repost after you watch this video and tell me what y'all think. We will be celebrating Kwanzaa a little differently this season in our home. We'll be doing it over Zoom. You know, my sister and I, we grew up celebrating Kwanzaa. Every year, our family would, and our extended family, we would gather around across multiple generations, and we'd tell stories. The kids would sit on the carpet, and the elders would sit in chairs, and, and we would light the candle. So she grew up celebrating a holiday that was only two years into a creation during her birth. And they've been doing that across generations and they shared their information through elders. So explain. But my main question to this Indian lady would be is what is your plan for black people? You got a plan to support women who want to murder babies. You have a plan to to support the immigrants. You got a plan for everybody else. But you are coming to asking black people for their vote. But you have not said anything about us. What about black people? I genuinely want to know. I don't see her pandering to anybody else, but you had a whole concert for, for black people. You had Megan Thee Stallion bending over backwards at your um concert. You had Quavo. You had Little John. But you have not said anything educated to black people. Nothing. Oh, well, Donald Trump shouldn't be telling no woman about her body. Well, you sure ain't leading them um, the correct way. You're not making them responsible. The fact that you're supporting women murdering babies is mind-setting to me. 
but you're okay with these immigrants coming over here harming animals, raiding people's apartments, taking control of people's apartments, and then claiming that it's not real when there's evidence of it. Baby, I'm mind blown. And then every time I communicate with one of my black people on what has Democrats done, oh, well, civil rights, our people still dying. So that didn't help us do nothing. Baby, I'm just over America. Baby, all y'all off. Let's not mention the fact that there are immigrants getting $15,000 in food stamps, three and four thousand dollars in cash assistance. Do you want me to show y'all the proof? Hold on. A migrant family of four in New York could get over 20 grand a month in freebies. 500 a night at a hotel, 130 a day for food, and having two kids in public school costs us five grand. To take it seriously. But, but people who are in, convicted in prison, like the Boston Marathon bomber, on death row, people who are convicted of sexual assault, they should be able to vote? I think we should have that conversation. What? Okay. Did she really just say that? This woman just said we should have a conversation about the Boston bombers being able to vote. Not only them, but terrorists. How did we get here? No, seriously, America. How did we get here? The only conversation we should be having is how she got in a place of being in the race to become president. Somebody that can say something so outlandish on TV should not be in the position that she's in. Now we see why there's so many immigrants just crossing the border. Because of the administration that we're under right now, they don't care clearly when you have somebody saying that the boston bombers should be able to vote clearly they don't care about who enters into this country these would be the same people that are take away the american flag these would be the same people that are trying to take you away your freedom of speech and y'all just think it's la la and dandelions right now yeah okay i'm telling you if you let this person in office you are stepping into judgment May the Lord give us all light. Amen. Family, it's a sad commentary when Candace Owens can get a one-two off on you, get a nice little jab cross off on you. That's how bad and egregious your record is, that Candace Owens can get one off on you and it'd be a legit one off on you. Sad. So apparently TikTok deleted the full video that I was trying to show y'all, which is, of course, crazy. But take a look at this clip. And if y'all want to go over to Candace's YouTube, but the information she discovered is crazy. Look and pointed out a major discrepancy, mainly that her grandmother, who she produced a photo of herself with, happened to die before Kamala was born like comment repost get everybody else down this rabbit hole with us yikes let's get right to this but before we do how y'all doing today i hope y'all day is going well but let's talk about this because black democrats y'all got some explaining to do on this one. you see i was sent the news article on x and i found it very interesting to say the least so without further notice it reads Black operatives are furious over how Kamala Harris's campaign is spending money. Minority-owned firms are frustrated the campaign is relying on white-owned firms for spending, and they're worried that could ultimately hurt the campaign with voters of color. Oh, Lord, come this voter of color shit. And we continue to read. Derek Johnson, the president of the NAACP, was frustrated after a call with Kamala Harris's campaign early last month. He and others on the call felt they hadn't gotten a clear answer to something that has mystified leaders in Congress, co-chairs of the campaign, and donors. Why did it seem like minority-owned political firms that typically work with Democratic campaigns aren't getting as much of the record-breaking Harris campaign money as white-owned firms? Ain't that some shit? If black voters are the base, it should be black vendors telling the story, said one person familiar with the conversation with the nonpartisan group's leader. Nonpartisan my ass. And by the time the call finished, we still didn't really have any clear answers on anything. Let's jump down a little to this part right here where it reads. Everybody who said it's not about money, that's a lie. It's all about money, he said, 
Well, he told notice and you ain't telling us nothing. We don't know concerning that. They're making noise because they want money and they want a contract and that's fair. It's fine and they should just say that. But one senior Democrat close to the campaign rejected that comment. Black people and black donors, they've been raising millions of dollars. This is not a handout for anything. This is about acknowledging the role of the black vote in a race that is essentially tied. Haven't we been hearing that the whole damn time? And the spending or lack thereof fits into a pattern of Democrats taking the constituencies necessary to win for granted, they say. Ain't that some shit? Y'all, all the buck dancing and trolling they've been doing on social media and they're not even being paid for it. They not getting a 30 pieces of silver for what they're doing, basically trolling the rest of us, disrespecting the rest of us. And I know it got to be rough being a sellout and you not even being paid for it. Let me guess, the Democrats must have told y'all they would have to do a study about paying y'all, right? What part of she's not going to do anything that benefits black people didn't you asses get? These sellouts are down bad. Y'all doing all that shit talking for free and complaining about not getting paid. Hell, on one of my videos, I had a Democrat comment basically telling me that anyone not voting Democrat is brain dead. Now, I can't speak for anyone else, but if I'm foolish enough to compromise my integrity and reputation for something, at least I'm smart enough to get the damn money up front first. Where I'm from, that's called hustling ass backwards. Y'all can't get the bag and now y'all trying to set the rest of us up to not have one either. Remember when Steve Harvey told, pe told black people to stop asking for stuff for our vote? I think that should apply here as well. Stop asking for stuff for being a sellout. Y'all sick as hell right now, ain't y'all? Because y'all ain't getting paid to lie to the rest of us. And y'all deserve everything you're getting and got coming to you. So, do as you please with this information. Because their payments were unburdened by a tampon delivery truck. And now we're waiting for the results of the unburdened middle class study. Yo, they just gave the finger to black Americans again. Take a look at this. The time so heated, police had to step in. We're talking about city council today and a vote to spend $51 million on helping migrants here in Chicago. CBS2 political investigator Dana Kosloff was there for all the action and Dana, strong feelings all around. Yeah, Erica, and for many different reasons, among them the fact that this $51 million approved today is only a short-term fix and more money will be needed in just weeks. As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else. And anger. We don't want to have to recall anybody. We don't want to have to protest anybody, but we are not going to be ignored, Brandon. Stop voting Democrat. It gives me so upset that these Democrats are putting illegal immigrants ahead of the American needs, especially the black community when they need help themselves. But at the end of the day, you guys keep voting them in. When you stop voting Democrats in, you're going to see things are going to change. What do you guys think about the situation? Please leave a comment below. The second thing is immigration. These immigrants are coming here, they're going to clean your tubes. They're clean. The immigrants are coming here, not coming here to be your friend, to get along with you. They're coming here to displace you, to get ahead of you, to get over you. That's why right now the Hispanics are saying that black folk are through in this country, that you've had your day. I don't know what they're talking about. We haven't had any day, but anyway, they think they, you, you've had your day. And because they got, now they're in control of confirmative action. Everybody's trying to create them. Watch all your campaigns. They're only talking about getting the Hispanic vote. They don't want your vote. Because you're not playing the game to win. You're not playing politics the way I told you to play politics by looking to get benefits.
You're not playing it to win. And, um, and we're going to get to that in a minute on how you learn how to play to win in powernomics. So what we're saying, these immigrants coming here, they, they, they're taking your lunch and eating it while you're running around trying to get along with them. They, have, they are not going to march on your behalf. I think a lot of people have actually exposed themselves when it comes to their real position on Palestine and their support for Palestinian people since Joe Biden dropped out of the race. But seeing as how Americans always prioritize comfort rather than actual change in their country, I personally am not surprised. And I think that it's really disrespectful and actually really embarrassing for a lot of you to keep claiming that you care about Palestine, the Palestinian people, that you care about the mass unaliving of a group of people, and you're willing to quickly change your support to support a candidate who clearly does not care about Palestinians, who's accepted money from APAC, and who's literally been the right hand to the administration that has been integral to allowing this to happen, that has not hesitated to send thousand pound bombs to obliterate a civilian population with no army. So I think a lot of you need to stop pretending. I think it's cool to appear to be leftist and whatever, but a lot of you are not in for the long run. And that's fine, but I think that a lot of you really need to get out of this circle of people who really are in this truly and with their entire being. Africa, are you from? I'm from America. That's what we're saying. Just what like a Jamaica, just like a no, no, no. Hold on. Just like somebody from Jamaica, they're not going to say what country in Africa they're from. Somebody in Haiti is not going to say what country from. They're going to say they're Haitian. Because they were closer from what is it called, the Triangle and Slave but Trade. But when they, when you ask them that question, mm -hmm. they're not going to have a definitive answer. That's because they're already in their own community of Caribbeans, the Haitians, Jamaica. They're all like in one bowl. Just but as far Black as Americans are in their own but bowl as well. Like I truly believe there needs to be a study done per the obsession with trying to disparage and diminish African Americans within the diaspora. To sit on a podcast in America with an American accent with black Americans dressed like a black American woman and tell them that they don't know where they come from or Africans perceive you as such. It really at this point is beyond the scope of sanity. This is the same issue we face with black Brits who same with Africans in this country. They have absolutely no idea of the history of the Americas and particularly the history of the United States of America. To not understand that Caribbeans are the same exact thing as Americans and then come to America but identify with Caribbeans but then identify with African Americans is the source of the problem. Africans look at the United States of America as a white country and they look at Americans as being white Americans. And so they look at us and they think we are immigrants the same way that Africans are immigrants in the UK, whereas we are just black and from America, which happens to be the land of milk and honey with all where all immigrants come and immigrate to. So in their view of America, they're, they're, they diminish our existence and they diminish our ethnic group, our culture and our history. Mind you, African-American culture, which is American culture, is the culture that has been exported to the world. I have been to every continent except for Antarctica, and I see pictures of Tupac, I see pictures of Biggie, I hear hip hop playing, I see people dressed like us. So the, the reach of African-American culture is a global one that many other black cultures haven't reached. She then goes on to paint this broad stroke of African-Americans being lazy, and this is a trope that they, they love to throw out. Take a listen to this. Africans come to America they're busting their behinds to get degrees, become doctors, lawyers, and stuff like that. So when Africans look at um, African Americans, they're like, these people have credit cards. We don't even have credit cards. These people are not even working, and we come here, we busting our we asses, are, we are, we and are. now we're doing this. Is We're now six figures, and these people have all these years to become all these great jobs and careers, and they're not doing anything. That's, I'm just saying this is what they're saying. Yeah, yeah this is but, a conversation. Okay. It's like, y'all have all this time to get free money, free loans, and we don't get that back at home. Yeah, but, but y'all get but, that when y'all come so, here, though. Exactly, and guess what? We're right here, and y'all are still uh, here. There's a lot of... The absolute gall and audacity of this girl to be in America and say that, well, we come over and we get more money than you. We have more education than you. Da, 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 da. Not understanding you wouldn't even be allowed to be in this country without the fight and the strife of African-Americans to fight for their own liberty and their own freedoms. Without African-Americans, you wouldn't be able to exist. You wouldn't be able to have a home. You wouldn't be able to have a bank account. You wouldn't be able to vote. 
the list goes on. So for you to come in and benefit off the backs of what African Americans have done and my ancestors have done, and then to disparage them and to diminish them in their own country is really fucking crazy. You left your country because of economic instability, political instability due to colonialism and the systems that were left in place after the Europeans left. Do you not think that America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, that's a majority white place, didn't put in systems set systematically oppress us till this day? So you come in and you don't have that systematic oppression in, ingrained in your culture and DNA. So you're able to hustle and do things that most black Americans can't even fathom. Let's use our brains before we get on podcasts and, and start talking. Maybe I should start a podcast. Honestly, because the people that go on these podcasts, they, they, they lack common sense. They lack historical context. They lack nuance. And they lack the ability to think logically. Bye, y'all. What's one question you got for Americans? Why are you so dunce? How? Does that mean? Dunce means smart. No, it doesn't, it doesn't mean. That doesn't mean. Dunce does not mean smart. I'm not dumb. <laughs> I am not dumb. <laughs> See they see they don't even know. You see they don't even know. They don't even know. What does dunce mean? Dunce. Dumb. 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 What? Wait, what does it mean? Do valid. Do valid. Do valid. What does it mean? Dumb. Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said that dunce means what? Dumb. 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 Right. Right. What's a dunce? What's dunce? Dunce. Like dunce. Yeah, idiot. You see how easy it is to, to manipulate the mind just with a couple of face reactions? All the people people them can be fully done in this, you know? Oh, All right, then. Room. Room. And me alone come from Jamaica, you know? I'm, I'm a cousin, you know? See the father? Yeah, you come from Jamaica. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you're from Jamaica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Look, look, look. You said Americans are so dunce, right? Yeah. What continent is Jamaica in? Aren't you from Jamaica? I just want to know what country is Jamaica in? Who? Me don't know that. Oh my God! Another day in London and more people being foolish. Full videos uploaded on YouTube right now. Go check it out because this one is wild. I said what I said and I'm standing on business because it's facts over feelings. Africa is not the motherland. America is the true old world. Africa has 640 crops. 600 of those crops are indigenous to the Americas. The main crop that feed millions of Africans, Africans is cassava. Cassava comes from South America. Second of all, we have the oldest pyramids and we have more pyramids in Africa. Third of all, and the most important reason America is a true old world, they're finding human bones million years old human bones over here in the americas meanwhile y'all finding three hundred thousand year old australopithecus bones aka eight bones in africa maybe africans are apes descendants of apes but black americans don't come from apes clock it what a lot of people don't know is that african americans are the highest group of new homeschoolers in the United States right now. And I think that that's because we realize that honestly, the American school system is, is very oppressive to our black boys, if I can be honest. And being able to cultivate an environment where you can actually expose them to history, to, you know, different types of learning things that aren't whitewashed, um, being able to, you know, give them a, a, a larger amount of exposure in different subject areas, uh, being able to not put your kids in situations where they're being bullied and also even supporting mental health, being able to like have the autonomy and then the like where you can control the environment to support your child is just something that more and more of us are, are doing. It's Know Your Rights Wednesday. I'm attorney Christopher Wright. Today we're talking about the factors federal judges must take into consideration regarding a defendant's eligibility for release. Recently in the news, Diddy was denied bail for his current pending criminal charges in federal court. When making a determination regarding the eligibility of a defendant for pretrial release, the judge must consider the following factors. One, the nature and circumstances of the offense. Two, 
the weight of the evidence against the person, three, the history and characteristics of the person, four, whether at the time of the current offense or arrest, the person was on probation, on parole, or on other release pending trial, sentencing, appeal, or completion of sentence for an offense under federal, state, or local law, and five, the nature and seriousness of the danger to any person or to the community that would be posed by the person's release. So those are the factors the federal judge must take into consideration regarding the defendant's eligibility for release in a nutshell. And remember, if you're in the wrong, see Mr. Wright. Former judge and prosecutor in Orange County under investigation has taken his own life as the FBI moved in today to arrest him. Eyewitness News reporter Marcus Solis is in Campbell Hall with the breaking details. Marcus? Sandra and David, federal agents and state police still here at the scene in this apartment complex in Campbell Hall. Dramatic turn of events. And while it is believed that that former prosecutor and judge took his own life, the FBI acknowledging that one of its agents, at least one of its agents, did open fire. So the shooting that took place, the gunfire that took place this morning, still very much under investigation. But it is alleged that uh, Stuart Rosenwasser was accepted tens of thousands of dollars in bribes to prosecute a case in 2022. Now, he abruptly resigned earlier this year. But back in 2022, he had initiated an investigation into a cryptocurrency theft scheme that resulted in a guilty plea. That case involved a 37-year-old man accused of ripping off his uncle. Rosenwasser had previously represented the uncle in real estate dealings when he was in private practice. As part of the investigation, texts were discovered between Rosenwasser and Martin Sudini saying he was, quote, putting maximum effort into this case and, quote, I will always protect you. Federal prosecutors say Rosenwasser took roughly $63,000 in bribes. A federal grand jury had returned an indictment against Rosenwasser, who was supposed to appear in court this afternoon in White Plains before the dramatic turn of events here this morning. Martin Sudini also named in that indictment and is also facing charges in this case. We're live in Campbell Hall. Marcus Silver. Who's surprised by Janet Jackson's statement? What exactly did Janet Jackson say? You're completely ineffective as a content creator and should have informed the people who follow you what she actually said before you went on your tangent. Candace, go. I wonder where she stands in the forthcoming election. After all, I say, America could be on the verge of voting its first black female president, Kamala Harris. This is Janet Jackson. Well, you know what they said, supposedly, she asked me. She's not black. That's what I heard, that she's Indian. She looks at me expectantly, perhaps assuming that I have Indian heritage. Well, she's both, I offer. Her father's white, Janet says. That's what I was told. I mean, I haven't watched the news in a few days. I was told they discovered her father was white. So now we have the exact quote. Well, the part of the quote that this activist journalist chose to share. When the last time Janet Jackson had a black experience in America? Black experience in America. Oh, so all black people in America have experienced the same things. The victimhood stuff, the weight in the water. For the sake of this reductive conversation, we'll play the game. Janet has talked about being pulled over. She's talked about being told no because of her race and gender. Celebrity is a job, and just like any job, there's your work life and then there's your personal life. Being a 58-year-old millionaire does not mean you are exempt from setbacks or racism or prejudice or misogyny or any of the other things that you love to think attack only black people who are not privileged let alone a real job a real job you mean going someplace that you hate that does not contribute to your purpose or your life's mission that's not a job that's misery let's be clear janet is not just a woman janet jackson is a business and the business of janet employs thousands of people around the world Thousands of real jobs on the technical, performance, and administrative sides of the entertainment industry. This woman being rich and famous most of her life. This is the part of the conversation where people like this want black folks to apologize for their success or repent for the family they just happened to have been born into. She had the luxury of only dealing with her problems and her trauma and her bubble with the money and resources to get professional help. What the hell does that even mean? While the rest of us, we have our own trauma and problems to deal with. Aside from that, we have to go work a nine to five and problems and stress to deal with in, in the job environment. And then we have to interact with this society. Life's hard. Get a helmet. The things that you're complaining about is not unique to a millionaire or a thousandaire or a person with a negative checking account. Everybody got something and it's not what you dealt, it's how you deal with it. And the last time that I checked, we're all individuals first. I'll tell you this. 
regardless of Kamala's race, ethnicity, ethnicity, culture, whatever, she's more connected to the people than Janet Jackson. Why? Because she had Megan the Stallion at her rally? Because every perv in Hollywood has endorsed her? Kamala is not from the hood. Her family had money long before she was even conceived. But that's the critique you have of Miss Jackson. And I'm sure Sheree Peoples, Jamal True Love, and the family of Officer Isaac Espinosa would vehemently disagree with you. If you don't know who any of those people are, why don't you go look them up? Janet Jackson been disconnected. And Kamala Harris has never been connected. Whereas Janet Jackson and her family earned it. A working class family from Gary, Indiana. Mother Catherine worked at Sears, and her father Joe worked in the steel mill. They were raising nine babies in a 670 square foot house, two bedrooms. The six boys slept on bunk beds in one bedroom, the parents had the other bedroom, and the three girls slept out on the couch in the living room. The Jacksons are literally black entertainment royalty. Put some respect on their name. Nobody handed them a damn thing. Their ADOS, American descendant of slavery. Their FBA, foundational black Americans. And to all the people talking about, oh, well, they went off and married people of other races. That's not, I don't care about, no one cares about mixing races. The point is Kamala Harris is not a foundational black American. She is not descendant of foundational black Americans and she never will be. Kamala Harris is literally the descendant of slave owners. And one more thing before I go, yes, some of the Jackson children are mixed, but the one thing all of those kids will be able to say is yes, my mom or my dad is a foundational black American, period. This is it. What a sweet house. All 670 square feet for nine kids. It's charming. And, uh, and, and uh, two parents. When we were little, this house seemed so big. Let's go inside, come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just can't get over how small this place is. It is small. Do you remember where you used to sleep in this house? No. Okay, let me tell you. There used to be a, a Riviera sofa here. And you, Latoya, and Rebe will sleep right here. In the living room? Yeah. You're kidding? Right here. America, I need you to forget about everything that's going on in this country right now and listen up very, very closely. Someone has invited you to come to their country. And the last time they did this, they were inviting Ukrainians to come into their country before something very, very major happened. Um, guys, Vladimir Putin has just invited every single American who is interested to come to Russia and get citizenship. And if any of you guys have seen the uh, Tucker Carlson interview, when you think about Russia, from what he, he showed, it's actually a better, cleaner, uh, more modern country than America. So will you take Vladimir Putin up on his offer and move to Russia? And who knows, could that be warning because be because something major is getting ready to go down here in America? I'm out. So NBA family decided to share this video because I, I thought it was interesting to hear that rhetoric. And I was like, this man can't be NBA. He might be. I highly doubt it. He doesn't have a full facial. And then he also got the hat on. But what are we doing? First off, Russian winners? Let's just do that. Let's just let's just throw out the whole notion of, of, of fleeing just for a second. We're not dealing with them goddamn winners. That's a whole different culture we're going to have to learn. We got to acclimate the money it's going to take. Transfer your money with your job. We're not doing that. We have built this land. We are the heirs to this land. We are the heirs to reparations, which we deserve for building this land for free. We're not running. They have tried to get us out of here. They've tried every which way to make us feel like, hey, we need to go somewhere else to find our nirvana and all this. No, we stay in our asses right here. The tethers can flee. We actually need them to flee. The tethers flee. That will free up a lot of jobs, opportunities. That would get a lot of this undermining going on. And all we have to do with it is the white supremacists and the in-house coons. That'd be it. That'll make our jobs easier. So, you know what, tethers? I'm all for it. Flee. Flee away. Let me first state that this is for entertainment purposes only. It's getting ready to be a coastal strike. 
when it comes to the dock workers, meaning any goods, which is most of American goods, since we don't we don't produce shit no more. It's coming from overseas is going to be delayed talking about everything from oil and gas which means that the gas prices are going to shoot back up you know the little cushion that we didn't had over the last couple of weeks that shit may not be it's not gonna be there no more okay auto parts food sisters them bundles that y'all be getting overseas it's gonna be a delay on them too you know how we got all these holidays that's coming up maybe a pause on that because a lot of people have already pre-ordered things in order to put in their stores for holidays see i thought it was just a boeing no, it's, it's pretty much all the dock workers all across the country from East Coast to West Coast to down South. Biden doesn't help them come to some type of agreement and stop this shit from happening. It's supposed to happen October 1st. He has until the 30th of September to, to do something. He's going to have to do something and not send Jill Biden ass in. On top of that, there's currently 1,800 workers from the hotels that are currently on strike. I'm talking about from the hotels at the Hilton. You got people from Hawaii. San Diego, like they're talking about the fact that they have some people ain't got raises in damn near eight to nine years and they're sick and tired of it. So they're on strike right now at this point. It's, 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 it's a whole lot of greed going on. They're doing it at the expense of the workers. Meanwhile, we got a, a whole situation going on at our border while the news keeps lying and making it seem as if everything is okay. And it really the fuck isn't. Because if you go right now and look at the debt calculator when it comes to the United States, baby, we broke. Okay debt is way bigger than what we're producing right now. We're not producing shit. So therefore, we're broke. The thing about it is that these billionaires and millionaires, they're not telling us anything about it. Because when it all falls to shit, guess what? They can hop right on their little private jets, go to all of those countries that they have already taken and sent their people over here and leave us here stuck with these motherfuckers. I know people going to say, oh, well, it's Trump's fault. It's Trump's fault. It's Trump's fault. Not calling on Trump to help out. Calling on this administration right now. You know, the administration where he ain't met with his cabinet members in almost 11 months and he sent his wife in to do his bidding. You know, the same president trying to stop a deal because Japan wants to buy our steel mills because they going broke. You could say whatever you want to say about Trump. You, you could dislike his what he did in the past. You could say that he's just a terrible person. Our economy has never dealt with a blow this bad. Yes, the pandemic was fucked up. It was. This is scary. Very fucking scary. And it's showing that our administration is very fucking weak. They're weak as hell. Why on God's earth, I, I still will never understand why y'all want to vote this person in office. Who's currently in office right now. Supposed to be advising the president who seems to be losing his shit right now mentally. By the time she gets in office, if she wins, we're already going to be up shit's creek. So at the end of the day, why you ain't, why, why you ain't, why you ain't fixing this right now? Why you got the power to do so? Because ain't shit straight until it gets straightened. Y'all need to straighten this shit up. Y'all got about T-minus hours. September 30th is damn near the fate of our country. What happens if our seaports go on strike? The strike is set for October 1st, so you better share this with everyone. Because if our ports close, everything we depend on closes with it. Let's talk about what would happen within the month of October. On day one, international fuel shipments are the first to feel the impact. Crude oil tankers stuck offshore means no new fuel entering refineries. By the end of the day, concerns spread across industries as gas stations, trucking companies, and airlines brace for immediate shortages. Everything from fuel to imported goods is at risk, but fuel becomes the most critical loss. By day three, gas stations are starting to run dry and rationing begins. Prices surge as demand skyrockets. Without fuel, trucks can't deliver goods and the first shortages show up in grocery stores. Businesses relying on imported oil like refineries scramble to maintain operations with whatever reserves they have left. The ripple effect starts to hit home. No fuel means no transportation. And without transportation, the flow of goods stop. Day seven, the energy crisis takes hold. Within the first week, the impact of fuel shortage deepens. Trucks, trains, and ships that move essential supplies across the country slow to a halt. Agriculture and manufacturing are crippled, unable to operate without fuel for machinery and transportation. Airlines begin canceling flights and public transportation services are cut. Gas prices hit all-time highs as panic buying intensifies. By week two, the power grid struggles and collapse looms. Power plants that rely on imported fuel start to struggle and blackouts spread as they ration what's left. People begin hoarding fuel and chaos erupts at the pumps. The stock market plummets as industries reliant on global supply chains begin to crumble. The economy falters and unemployment skyrockets as factories close and businesses shudder. 
By week four, total breakdown of society. By the end of the month, the energy crisis and fuel shortages bring society to its knees. Cities erupt into fuel riots and law enforcement is overwhelmed. With no fuel, food distribution collapses and starvation becomes a real threat. Communities are left to fend for themselves as fuel reserves dry up completely, leaving transportation, emergency services, and the economy in ruins. Without ports, crude oil can't get in. Without crude oil, fuel can't be made. Without fuel, everything grinds to a halt. When the fuel stops, America stops. And just so we're clear, this could all happen within the month of October. AP out. So what you see in a sister and this white man both saying that the seaports could be shut down. Our brother Tariq doesn't seem so crazy when he said, hey, we need to stock up on the dry foods, on them big old pails of food that you can get on Amazon. The, you know, the, the, the rice and peas and all that stuff. Family, if you know how to garden, you need to be gardening. If you know someone who knows how to garden, you need to be pitching in, helping them garden. If you know how to clean, uh, get water and filtrate it to make sure it's clean water. So I tell brothers Moses West, he's able to extract it from the air. But, you know, those machines take time to build. In the meantime, you're going to need something to drink. Being able to do that, for those who you know how to fish and hunt, game to, you need to get with people who know how to do that. If you don't know how to do it, get with them. And another thing, family, this will do, if this happens and everything shuts down and it gets real thick, this will weed out the useless men and women in our community. Because resources are going to be super thin at that point. And we're going to have to make sure those of us who know how to build and provide a, a skill set to help our, our empowerment also help us stay alive, survive, we're going to make sure they stay at the forefront. Everyone else, we're going to have to move them out the paint. We ain't got time for somebody to be sitting at the house all day or sitting around while the men are out hunting and gathering, while the sisters are attending to the garden or vice versa. Well, you know, I ain't going to have y'all out there hunting, sisters. But, you know, while people are gardening or they're, they're tilling land or they're making, you know, prepping the food and all that stuff, you got Negroes standing around looking through it. We got to keep them out the paint. So, this could happen. We're not sure. Um, I've seen news articles. You can go look them up. I think Daily Mail has one. It'll be in the next compilation. The family, stay ready so we don't have to get ready. So it's snowing in Alexandria, Egypt. Do you remember just the other day I was showing y'all that they were having a sand tsunami? And now this is happening. Look at this, y'all. Even the animals were perplexed and confused by the situation. Look at the lion and the lioness in the back. Look at that, y'all. They don't know what to make of the situation. Oh, look at her trying to come up for warmth around them. That's crazy. Look at that. Look at these animals. Look at this guy. Look at this guy coming out of the cave to check out the snow. You can tell he's not used to this. Look. Look how confused he looks. Look, he's like, what is this? What is this? What the? What is this? Huh? <laughs> It's crazy. But y'all not seeing how deep it is. Look at his paws just going through that junk. And these guys don't even want to mess with it. They're on top of the cave. They don't even want to mess with it. It's crazy. Look at look at the clouds. Look at the sky. Look at that. Mm, interesting times, y'all. It looks like there's a little bit of energy going on around the planet because even right now in Florida, we're facing Hurricane Helene or Helen. But y'all be safe out there. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I'm only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift, y'all. Peace out.